few weeks, well, a couple of months actually ago, I was invited by So Me Sunshine to make something out of some fabric that they were kindly gifting to me. I chose the Lisa blouse from Vicky Sells Patterns. So if you want to see how I got on with it and what fabric they gave me, stick around. <music> Stitcher and welcome to my YouTube channel. Excuse the bins, I'm going to be reading from my iPad today because there's lots of information I need to give you about the beautiful Lisa blouse from Vicky Sells Patterns. Now this pattern has been in my stash for over a year and I just couldn't find fabric that did it justice. And when Saw Me Sunshine contacted me and asked me to look on their website and see if there was some fabric that would match a pattern that I wanted to make, I was bowled over. So super excited when I found some fabric that I could make the Lisa blouse in. There's an image of the fabric on Saw Me Sunshine. Now, they may or may not have the white in stock at the moment, but I'm sure they will get some back in stock. So if you want to recreate the exact look, contact them and ask them to let you know when they've got it back in stock. They do have it in different colours. It is a beautiful fabric, perfect for the Lisa blouse. It's a cotton dobby, but it's a lightweight, long weight cotton. So it's bloaty but good for pressing in the pleats the, the pleat detail across the front and down the sleeve and it has lots of gathers as well so fabric that is too heavy will not work and i was concerned i didn't want fabric that was too light but before we reveal my beautiful blouse let's talk about the laser blouse and why I picked it and what they say about it. I'm going to shamelessly read from my iPad so apologies if I'm looking away from the screen but there's an awful lot to tell you about the Lisa. It says buy the Lisa blouse pattern from Vicky Sews. Lisa is a voluminous straight cut blouse. The front, 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 the front and back of the blouse have yokes that finish with with a pin tuck at the bottom bottom edge. The centre sections of the front and back feature gathers peeking out from underneath the yoke. The blouse has wide pockets at the centre fronts which fasten with buttons and rouleau loops. Lots of rouleau loops. The blouse has a stand collar and long three-piece set-in sleeves. These are gathered along the top part of the sleeve cap as well as along the bottom edge of the sleeve. The sleeves have pin tucks along the front and elbow seams. These pin tucks align with those on the front and back yokes. The elbow seam on the sleeve finishes with a vent and the bottom edge of the sleeve features a wide cuff with buttons and rouleau loop fastening. Lisa is hip length. Now that's a lot of detail, isn't it? A lot of detail in the blouse and a very meaty sell for me. But oh boy, am I glad I stuck with it. I didn't sew it all in one go. I did it in two hour chunks and then left it, went away, did something else. The next day came back to it. And it took me just over a week from start to finish, if I'm honest, doing little bits here and little bits there. I even took it down to Anglesey when I went down for my sewing retreat with Sam. And I did some down there. And I would have had the whole shirt blouse finished. 
but I left the collar stand at home. So I had it all done apart from the collar stand in Anglesey, which was great going. What fabrics do they suggest that you should do the Lisa blouse in? Well, they say gauze, textured viscose, silk, artificial silk, slip on, sorry, slip on, artificial silk, chiffon, batiste, don't know what that is, and organza. But I'm also adding Dobby Cotton more because it really does work. How much fabric do you need to make this seemingly voluminous blouse? Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was, if I'm honest. I had the cotton dobby fabric from Sun Sunshine, which was 59 inches wide. If you've got 59 inch wide fabric, you need 1.9 to 2.3 meters, depending on your size. So my sunshine sent me two meters and I managed to get comfortably get the blouse out of it. So I would say two meters at least. Now the Vicky Souls patterns sizing. They range from a UK 6 to a UK 20 so not extremely size inclusive but because I'm petite that isn't an issue and the good thing about them as well if you are petite or you're on the tall side Vicky sells patterns come in three different sizes which means that a petite lady like me doesn't have to make huge alterations in fact I didn't make any alterations to the pattern which was brilliant because yeah it can get a bit wearing sometimes you get all excited about a new pattern and then you've got to spend about an hour at least figuring out all the adjustments before you can even cut the flipping thing out so Vicky Souls get a thumbs up from me on being height inclusive Sizes, as I said, are from a UK 6 to 20. I made up a size 12. The thing with Vicky Souls patterns is that you have to choose your size when you download the pattern because you only get one size, which can be a bit daunting. Now, I'm fairly comfortable with European pattern sizes and I was okay downloading the size 40 which is the equivalent to a UK size 12. One, I've made quite a few patterns, not Vicky Sells patterns, this is the first one I've made, but size 40 tends to fit me okay. And because it's quite a loose fitting blouse, it was a good one to try a Vicky Sells pattern or out on. If it was a fitted garment, I'd have been a little bit more worried about what size I needed to order. But it's like any pattern company, once you've made two or three patterns, you know the size you need to order and you're good to go. So yeah, that is the only negative I've got really, is that you can only download one pattern size at a time. So it can be quite expensive if you want, if you choose the wrong size and need to order another one, can't it? I already mentioned that they're height inclusive and they have four, yes, four height sizes. Wowza. So the one I picked was for midgets, basically. Five foot one to five foot three fit me perfect. You can then have five foot four to five foot six, five foot seven to five foot nine and five foot ten to six foot one. So everybody can order a vicky soul whatever height you are vicky soul's pattern will fit in my opinion without having to alter them which is great so what else do you need apart from your two meters of fabric you need some lightweight woven interfacing now I always use woven interfacing. 
it is just what I've done for years and a few other bloggers have started catching on to this idea that woven interfacing is probably a good thing to way to go and great because yes it is in my opinion if you're spending hours and hours days and days creating a beautiful garment why would you skimp on your interfacing it just doesn't make sense so good quality interfacing and woven interfacing is a definite must for me so what else do you need huh. 18 buttons yes you heard me right 18 buttons and that means that you've got 18 rouleau loops to make that is a job and a half now it's not as bad as it sounds because you make them in nine inch loops and then you chop them down so i think you make three nine inch rouleau loops which then makes your 18 loops i know so yes you need 18 buttons but you only need very tiny ones so not too bad and then matching thread and that's it so have a wet your appetite are you interested in the lisa blouse shall we have a look at my version i'll go and grab it spin the specs we we're getting a lot of reflection from them weren't we and i don't need to read anything anymore so here it is my beautiful lisa blouse i used gold and white buttons on them on them on it which i think go really well here's the cotton dobby from so me sunshine it is only semi opaque but because it is a loose fit blouse with all the gathers i did wonder whether i'd need to get a slip to go underneath it but no i'm quite happy with it if i'm honest i've not bothered so it has a little stand-up collar all the gathers on the front and all the gathers on the back they're the pin tucks that go along the edge of the front yoke and you continue down the sleeve on the front and then all along the back yoke and continue down the sleeve on the back now that was something that i hadn't done before and it's always good to do new things so i'll just quickly explain because it was like oh yeah wow that's really clever when i've done it say you're sewing the sleeve at the front you would sew your two so the sleeves in three parts by the way you have a front a back and then a centre bit and then you've got all that gathering in the sleeve as well all you do is so one centimeter in from the edge so a basting stitch so number five on my machine where along your seam then one centimeter in from that you sew your normal seam size and you do that with every one of the seams where there's a pin tuck and what that does it creates that pin tuck for you and then when the garment's finished you just undo all the tacking stitches now i did take a bit of time lining up the sleeve and the front and the same at the back so that all the pin tucks lined up and i also hand tacked that part of the seam so that it wasn't going to move when i was sewing and then they all lined up and that worked really well for me the only other hand sewing that you do is the rouleau loops when you're putting those in 
you don't rely on pins to hold them in place because they go in between you pluck it you hand tack them all in place before you sew you pluck it together and then they don't shift around which I thought was a bit of a pain at the time because me and hand stitching do not go together but actually it was a good idea because it meant the rule on didn't move and then I have to undo it all and do it again and then you've got the rouleau loops quite a wide cuff on the bottom three buttons and rouleau loops and there we have it absolutely in love with this blouse I've worn it loads already in fact I think there's a bit of makeup around the neck it's dual wash need to get it in the wash and I, I just want to wash it on its own it's so delicate all the work that's gone into it really really don't want it to come out of the wash all mangled so i think i'm going to put it in a laundry bag on its own then it doesn't get wrapped around the washing machine drum and it'll come out reasonably okay i hope so there is my first vicky sells pan my first collab with a fabric company so thank you so me sunshine for trusting me to make the blouse in your beautiful fabric if you want to find out more about so me sunshine and you want to read the blog post that I made for them I will pop the link for it below go over and have a nosy so the question is will I make another Lisa blouse yes it is a stunningly beautiful blouse and i definitely want to make one in a darker color for the autumn if i've got the time will i make another vicky sells pattern yes i know the size i need it's a size 40 so size 40 fits that body shape i know i can or i can so I order a size 40 and it gives me all the different heights to print off. I've not got to choose one height, you just choose one size. So I know I can print 5 foot 1 to 5 foot 3 and the patterns fit me without altering them. And the instructions were brilliant. The Lisa blouse does have a sew along already on youtube so i will pop the link for that below as well so if you're wondering whether you fancy making it watch that that so long it is quite detailed the so long quite a lengthy one because there's a lot of work in the blouse but you end up with a beautiful garment at the end of it so to my mind it's well worth giving it a go so if you've made a few blouses, you fancy doing something different, have a look at the Lisa blouse. I absolutely love, love, love it. If you've got any questions on the blouse, comment below. If you've made Vicky Sells patterns and you recommend another pattern for me to try, then please let me know as well. And I will love you and leave you now. And hopefully you've been inspired to make your own version of the Lisa blouse. Bye for now.